Hi everyone, thank you for being here. I will talk about security in containers and Kubernetes. Let's continue. Let's see. In these presentations, I will give an overview about security from the source code until Kubernetes. Uh, talk about supply chains, container security, and Kubernetes security. Uh, here an overview about container and some tools and controls that we could use in security. So when you build your image and next you will deploy it in some virtual machine or Kubernetes cluster, you will follow this step. Uh, we can see here the steps and also using CI CD you could automate automatize some controls. So for example, when we maybe you are more uh, you are more common with static analysis that you can introduce SAS, DAST, uh, try to find secrets. But right now we also using image uh, terraform for cloud formation and you need also other tools like infrastructure to scanning and uh, also tools for vulnerabilities and misconfigurations uh, maybe it's new for you the part of supply chains that it's uh, a new controls that it's important for avoid supply chain attacks and you will need to protect your your code maybe create a bone that is uh, details of all your libraries and dependencies that you are using. Uh, it will help you with the source integrity, trying to, to search for the best practice when you are uh, using so source code management, for example. Also, uh, the supply chains will help you with build integrity and deployed integrity. Uh, but also we will have the runtime protections that is in another stage because even if you have static analysis and supply chain, you will need uh, also some tools or some controls to avoid you, you have an attack uh, when your container is it's already in production or running. And I think here especially I will put some attentions about eBPF because I think one of the main difference between traditional applications and cloud native, maybe when we talk about traditionals, we will try to search for capturing package. Uh, we have some other traditional security tools that they try to, to do some forensing in about all the packets or the network that you can identify. But this kind of approach in containers, it's more difficult because uh, try to capture package, it's very expensive and also ineffective. And it's that that uh, eBPF programs could help you to collect events in real time uh, without disruption of your applications. So this is like a new approach for cloud native and security in, in this uh, in this approach of networking and security. Supply chain is an important topic. We will uh, we can see here we have three main streams source and build and deployment integrity. Uh, the main focus is because we have so many attacks in supply chain attack. Uh, you can see from solar winds and also so many problems with the dependencies about how we build our product. For example, the dependency confusion that basically anyone can alter some package in some upstream level and anyone and everyone is affected. So that is uh, the main problem and with supply chains best practice you can you you can try to resolve this. So for example, um, with Spawn, yeah, that 
maybe you already here we uh, try to receive a, a list of all the package together with all the dependencies that contains your artifactory that could be your container image or your code and this is the main step to try to validate the integrity of your source code so, uh, here also uh, i will continue here we have a security guide for supply chains uh, the center for internet security create a benchmark um, with uh, chain bench you can automatize these controls these controls is basically applying about the these three main artifacts that that will be the source the build and the deployment try to validate the integrity for example prevent a malicious a malicious code that it can commit in your repository or sign it your artifacts in the build process for example when you are creating an image and also in the deployment you only have to deploy sign it artifacts so, uh, you can validate with all these these guides uh, will validate all these steps between all this flow and also we have salsa that uh, it's also another framework for supply chains uh, supply chain levels for software artifacts and uh, you can use uh, this with this tool you can have these both outputs these controls you can validate if you are following this this best practice about supply chain Container signing is an important part of supply chains. You can use a tool like Cosign or Notary to sign the artifacts. In the case of image, you sign your, your artifact that is the image. And when you will deploy to Kubernetes, for example, you validate, you verify that the source that you are pulling this image is a trusted source also using admissions controller you can validate you can automatize inside of kubernetes these steps uh, the general steps as, as you can see in the graphic is about signing is you generate a key pair to sign your image container or any other artifact and when you will use in the deployment or in your infrastructure this artifact you validate that this this artifact is signed uh, also could be other artifacts could be like helm charts or web assembly modules or even ebpf programs you you can validate these artifacts before you deploy it in your infrastructure that is from a, a trusted source so this is important steps in the supply chains. Well, let's talk about more container security. And right now we are seeing the top 10 about OWASP, that is the top 10 of the main problems of vulnerabilities or misconfigurations in web applications. And as you can see in this step, you already can solve this, resolve it using SAS and DAS tool and also supply using the, the best practice of supply chains. So you need to do this kind of steps before. And when you already validate this, these issues, you also can focus in the container security because you can do the best practice that we will talk about container. But if you don't review this before a stage about your web applications with these no issues, uh, your container also will be expo ex exposed because inside of your, of your container is this web application that is not following the recommendations about uh, web applications. Okay, so let's talk about more about one on the main uh, issues that you have to put in your pipeline that is 
review misconfigurations in when you built your image. And one of the basic problems in about misconfigurations uh, is that you uh, have to avoid to use the rootless, to use the root user, avoid to use because this uh, could uh, could have issues that someone that can break inside of your, your container, it will be very easy to get access to the host. So you could avoid this uh, trying to, to create a user, also try to drop capabilities. And another important about container security is validate for your vulnerabilities because as your source code can have vulnerabilities that is validated maybe by SAS DAS tools, you also need to validate the vulnerabilities that contain your image. With a small image, you have less vulnerabilities. So it's a good practice that you try to build a small image. This will reduce your attack surface. surface. <laughs> and uh, right now, yeah, I think try to avoid to use a root user. And uh, I have a checklist for more deeper details about like protect also your container runtime, um, try to, to protect your host. Yeah, this kind of uh, details also is part of all the cycle of your container. For example, if you are only using Docker, you need to follow the best practice with the Docker container runtime. And yeah, uh, I think these two main uh, parts about review your misconfigurations and the vulnerabilities are very important and list the minimal things to review in your container security. Let's talk about more Kubernetes security in the next slide. In Kubernetes infrastructure, we have to take care about the main components that it will be the master and the nodes. Uh, try to limit the access to the Kubernetes API server. Uh, try to see what are our trusted networks to, to allow it to access. Also try to think about how is the architecture and the communication between the components. For example, here you can see the ports that you need uh, from the perspective of the master and the node. Also the other components that are important, for example, ETCD, it does that component is encrypted. You are using TLS communications between these, these components for the communications. Uh, and if you think about also in the host security, you can try to validate that your host, your maybe your Ubuntu, uh, if you if these uh, installations are following the best practice, for example, the sys benchmark, or they are following some compliance from the point of view of the operator system. So next. We can use the own Kubernetes features to improve security. In authorization, we have airbag, a role-based access control, to help us to reduce the permissions to apply the least privileged access. We could reduce permissions, authorize only that, that our applications need to access. And uh, also we have components like authentications that could uh, help us to know who is who is inside of our cluster Kubernetes, who really can uh, get access. And if we use with single sign-on, depends on how our organizations get access to the to the cluster. We could do these kinds of settings. And also we have the the secret parts that you could uh, try to use encryptations and also try not to leave the secrets in your application. This is maybe if you can use a linter, you can not expose data inside of your applications. 
And uh, one special component is the pod security policy that right now is replacing with pod security admissions that help us to apply the best practice in container security, like uh, not to use a root, a root user or remove capabilities. And all the good practice that we see in container security, we call applied with, with the security admissions, with this security controls for the pod. And another important component is network policy that will help us with the segmentation. Then we could use this component to uh, create layers between our applications to create more walls to defense against attacks and also to uh, be more isolated between uh, the context that we are creating our application. And so the network policy will help with us. And also we have components inside of Kubernetes like uh, enable the auditing APR server and you also uh, we always can improve this the part of observability using some uh, logging for get the logs inside of Kubernetes okay 60% of the breaches it's because of misconfigurations and this is a step that you can do in your pipeline introducing your CI CD. You can use a tool for searching with these misconfigurations and avoid to be part of this report. Uh, talking about networking, especially networking in Kubernetes and cloud native, we can imagine people that is used to work with traditional applications, uh, sysops, they use a lot uh, the package capture. But if you think about just this technique in containers, it's really difficult to find people that has successful use this technique because the container is uh, rebooting, you no, know, it's ephemeral and he is continuous changes and if we try to use this kind of technique, we overlap, overload our container and we don't get some successful results. In, it's that when techniques, new techniques like, or new applications, because CBPF is like 10 years old, but right now we uh, have new applications using eBPF that help us in this kind of approach in networking and security. Well, uh, attacks against Kubernetes. We are doing this checklist from containers until Kubernetes because we want to prevent attack. And one of the main common attacks that we can find in Kubernetes is because misconfigurations in authorizations is, for example, in is a airbag problem. We have, uh, we give too much access and we need to improve this part. Uh, I know that this part of airbag sometimes is very difficult because it's complex inside Kubernetes when you try to apply the service accounts and the roles and reduce the access to the resource inside the API. But definitely we have more tools to help us with this overview about security in airbag. And we also have, when we talk about security, the zero day that is new, vulnerabil new vulnerabilities that is always appearing. It's always happening. So we need to be prepared. We need to have some runtime tool to help us to mitigate when our container is already running in production. And we have a, several kinds of attacks like river shells, uh, or we can have lateral moving. Uh, the problems is always, <laughs> it's always happening. Or oh, attacks more advanced like fileless malware. Uh, fileless, it's very difficult to detect because the malware is not running in a file system, it's running in memory and 
With this technique, it's more difficult that traditional security tools try to find uh, or discovering this kind of attacks. Okay. So here we have an overview about Kubernetes security. And one of the first component is the code. Could be any language that we are building our applications. And we could use tools like SAS, DAS, uh, SCA to look for vulnerabilities, for vulnerabilities in the dependencies, also looking for secrets. And this is like at the first stage. And when we build applications inside of uh, image, we also, in this new artifact, new component, we also need to find vulnerabilities because we know that we have other components that how we are building our image, for example, which uh, from which based, it could be like from Ubuntu or from a Disrollet. So we need to find against again vulnerabilities also misconfigurations in the docker file or uh, find also if when we build this image we have some hard codes uh, to do some secret scannings and when we go to the other level that will that it will deploy this image inside of the cluster we also have best practice Maybe you know this Kubernetes secure, security posture management that is a resume about the controls or, bar, or best practice that you need to do against all the components of Kubernetes. Like for example, uh, look for specific vulnerabilities of the Kubernetes components or also misconfigurations in the Kubernetes components. Um, or even in the manifest of the Kubernetes or HAL, you can find misconfigurations and you have tools to help us with that. And when you think about that the other component that is the cloud, you also can look for misconfigurations when you create this the service. For example, if you use some EKS, if this is exposed to the internet or how all this information is connected or even for any of these components could uh, you could get uh, you could receive an attack so it's important that you can have a uh, control in each stage so uh, i am yeah i think security is very complex and i am putting some resume in this repository if you if you want to give, if you want to see with more detail. And yes, finally, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. I leave my contacts and please contact me for any doubt or any feedback. I am leaving my repositories that I am trying to do some checklists about everything that we talk about. And well, see you. Thank you.